Um, this is a video which I have done in the past, so I am just uh, repeating this because many people ask for it. Is uh, how do you master investing uh, or what are the questions to ask for mastering investing? So first question is uh, <coughs> what is it? Uh, is, it uh, is it equity? Is it, de is it debt? Is it cryptocurrency? Is it uh, animal farm? <clears throat> it, it, what is it? So right. So uh, uh, second, uh, the answer to that is, do you understand what that person is saying? If he says cryptocurrency, you have heard the word cryptocurrency. Doesn't mean you understand. Doesn't mean I understand what is cryptocurrency. So I say, oh, it's a cryptocurrency. I don't understand, so I stay away. Or I say, <clears throat> I don't understand, so I will learn. Or third, I say, I don't understand, but since it is being offered by a mutual fund, I am assuming uh, there is a fund manager, SEBI has seen what it is and SEBI has approved it. Therefore, I will put a small amount of money into this cryptocurrency, right? So, these are two, three ways of reacting to it. But first of all, you have to understand what it is, because if you do not understand what it is, that causes the maximum amount of damage. There are people who do not understand how a shit fund works. There are many people who do not understand how a mutual fund works. So, they put 1 lakh and after 3 months, if they see the value at 98,000 or 94,000, then they want to withdraw saying, nay, nay, <coughs> there is some problem. In my bank FD, the value never changes. In the mutual fund, it has changed. You never told me that and they will remove the money. Nothing right or wrong. But if you do not understand what you are doing, it is bound to happen that you withdraw completely at a wrong time. This has happened. I have seen big trust doing that right at the onset of covid uh, one trust withdrew in the, on the worst possible day they withdrew about 4 crores and i was uh, the advisor called me and said will you please speak to the trustee the trustee was the trustee told me if it falls like this every month then in the one year my money will be wiped out now this is such a stupid argument but that was came from the fact that the uh, owner or the trustee just did not understand how a uh, equity market operates or how any market operates. He was a businessman and there is nothing that I could uh, do to salvage that amount. So, these things can happen. So, you decide how to react based on how much you understand and what you will do if you do not understand. You do not understand equity is fine. Somebody told you putting money in an index fund will work. Yes, maybe it will work, but you have to understand that there will be fluctuation, um, there will be huge standard deviation and all those things. So, be ready for it. At least understand those things before you invest. If you do not understand any of those things, maybe you should stick to a bank fixed deposit. There is nothing else that you should be investing because everything, real estate, gold, equity, everything will have a high standard deviation. If you do not understand standard deviation, it means you do not understand investing, right? That it is that bad. The second question to ask is, is it investing? Is it speculating? Is it gambling? Right? Make the distinction very clear and the distinction comes from uh, asking how long do I have to hold it? Uh, what is the upside? What is the downside? What, uh, right? These are these are all important questions. Is it gambling or is it uh, speculation? Right? You have to know the difference between the three. Uh, and then the question is, how long do I have to hold? What is the upside and how long do I have to hold? What is the downside and can it go to zero? Right? Some investments can never go to zero. Like if you buy an annuity, it can never go to zero. You will get a pension for the rest of your life. Even if you live till the age of 114, you will keep getting a pension. Right? That's what it says for your lifetime. So, can it go to zero? Is it possible that I withdraw and it becomes zero? Uh, I am doing a systematic withdrawal and it goes, can it go to zero? What is the downside? What is the downside that if I do not touch and it can still go to zero? What is the lock-in? Is there a period of time for which I just cannot withdraw, right? Uh, and uh, if I or if I is there a period of time for which I cannot withdraw? And is there a period of time for in which if I withdraw, I will pay a withdrawal penalty, right? Exit load. Do I pay an exit load? How much is the exit load? How much can it be? Right. Ask these questions because you do not ask these questions and say, oh, the advisor cheated me. Advisor did not cheat you. I, maybe the advisor did not know. Right? But you did not ask. You cannot be guilty. You cannot be uh, innocent saying, I did not ask and therefore he did not say. He is not duty bound to say. He may not even know that these are the questions to ask. What happens if your advisor himself does not know that these are the questions to ask? So, ask these questions. What is the upside? What is the downside? What is the lock-in? What is the ex uh, exit penalty? 
penalty right uh, can it be inherited is there a nomination possible should i make it joint with my wife should i make it joint with my husband whatever ask all those questions what is the advantages what are the disadvantages what happens if i don't have a nominee right if i don't know whom to nominate should i make my children uh, joint with this or should i make them only nominees what is the risk is it possible that there is a fraud and the whole money is lost right ask these questions because you don't ask nobody tells you and then you say oh nobody told me nobody is duty bound to tell you you are bound to know many of these things you are bound to know that equity has standard deviation not every advisor is going to remind you that equity has standard deviation you, if you tell him or her that you have been investing for a long long time that person will assume that you understand what is equity many people don't right so it is completely up to you and the advisor to decide at what level you want to start talking about right from base level or you assume that oh uh, I, I i i'm in fifth standard and address me like a fifth standard kid or are you a kg class kid also uh, in, in many uh, in, uh, fields they show uh, projected returns right if you are trying to buy a unit linked policy they will show you 30 years return so then you ask him or her what is the risk of using historical returns will it always happen will it not happen what is the probability of it happening do i have to review it every 2 years 3 years 5 years right ask those questions and uh, are you saying that this will definitely happen or is it a, is it a cost illustration or is it a return illustration how are you saying this will definitely happen like for example there can be a insurance policy where that is the sum assured it can be an extremely small amount but that sum assured you will get uh, if uh, on maturity it may be a small amount right but it you will get that amount that's very important you will get a, red, a bonus at the end of the period those are the advantages disadvantages i'm not getting into but at least understand the product that you are buying uh also understand that uh, every asset class has a different reason why it will uh, do well or not do well if india grows very well indian equity markets will do well so will debt but if india doesn't grow but internationally there is growth those companies which are in exports will do well if the international if there is an international slowdown and therefore lot of money comes into india therefore indian markets will do well so understanding the difference in the macro ask the ask these questions can it is it possible that i'll get a sub bank uh, rate right I, i'm getting 7% in the bank over the next 10 20 years will i get a rate less than 7% will i get a, a rate of 42% one year and a minus 4% the next year will all these uh, will all the standard deviation happen what is the risk that it happens in the initial stage and therefore it screws up my total return that i get in this product ask all these questions these are all questions which uh, one should be forced to ask because if you don't ask nobody is going to answer those questions uh, if there's a bonds uh, if there's a bond fund is there anything called holding a bond fund to maturity is it different from holding a bond to maturity people if you don't know this right then there are many people who do not know that uh, when you say direct scheme it means going to the website of the mutual fund and investing that is a direct scheme uh but uh, i see investing through icsa direct is not uh, investing in a direct scheme believe it or not many people do not know the difference so ask these questions equip yourself before you start investing right uh, what is the maximum downside risk what is the upside risk what happens if i got 42% should i withdraw and put it somewhere will you be there to give me advice or am i on my own after i buy the product no harm in asking this question also because uh, if he is a rm in the bank is bound to leave the bank in a year or two or three and this product also um, for a beginning investor i think you should pick up a glossary uh, i mean my book has a glossary but uh, you can pick up a glossary from somewhere uh, maybe it could be available free offline online uh, and understand all the terminology that is used understand uh, what that person says i ask the person that uh, when the market fluctuates what will i what will you do for me when the, you're selling this uh, product which is a third party product and you are a bank but tell me whom should i get in touch with in the um, current uh, concerned mutual fund or insurance will somebody there be able to guide me when there is a fall should i be investing more or should i switch between debt and equity what should i do who will be there to guide me because i am sure that you will not be there
so when you ask a ask a investment advisor all these questions a he will take you seriously or she will take you seriously say some of these answers i have some of these questions have an answer for some of these questions i do not have an answer for but at least you will be sure that the client uh, that the advisor is not taking you for a ride and then and then if you uh, think you still don't want to buy it then you say oh my cousin works for jp morgan or morgan stanley or anybody and say, is is a derivative trader in singapore this sounds intimidating enough and say i will talk to him or her and then only get back to you and another cousin is an attorney in new york and she deals with uh, these kind of uh, products regularly so i will ask both of them so please send me an email uh, i'll send it to both of them and they will have a look at it and then i will uh, take a decision uh this is the one of the best ways to push an rm and uh, force him to perform but largely all these questions are not meant just for the rm these are meant for you do you understand the answers that is another thing if somebody says oh 24% upside and 0% downside or 6% downside do you understand whether it 24 and 6 are right all right so all these questions you have to ask Uh, and you have to equip yourself to be able to understand the replies you don't want to do this you don't want to do any of these things best go to a uti index fund and do an sip and keep learning after you finish learning come back watch some of my other videos and start investing thank you one question which i keep getting asked regularly is uh, how did you retire and what did you do for your retirement so i have and i have said this reply uh, answered this question many times so mine has been it is not as though i thought that this is what i should do but i always thought that building a good portfolio is always useful so one thing which people suggest is to build a, a dividend yield portfolio because you can take the dividend amount and keep reinvesting in uh, in more shares and thus increase the size of the corpus so that at some stage of your retirement you will have enough dividend income with which you can retire or at some stage you have enough dividend income therefore you retire so the retirement uh, which i have uh, i start my book by saying that retirement is a sum of money not an age so you could have that sum of money at 45 and you decide that you want to retire financially you can retire whether you should retire is a completely different discussion so one there is uh, too much of uh, emphasis on dividend paying stocks so people say that all the shares that you buy for dividend for retirement especially should be good dividend yield stocks so that you can take the dividend and buy more of the same shares i'm using stocks and shares interchangeably uh, so you can buy more of the same shares and keep building your portfolio and create your portfolio i slightly uh, uh, want to differ because when i bought a share yes i was a value investor i did not know the term in 1982 or 1980 when i was investing uh, i used to look at dividend does the company pay dividend and afterwards chidambaram made the dividend taxable in the hands of the company so it became very attractive uh, instead of paying the tax because i was at the highest uh, rate of tax even now it is actually hurting that the company is not paying the tax and i am paying the tax sorry i am digressing but i don't agree that uh, every share that you buy should be a current dividend paying let's say you are 30 years of age and you are building a portfolio there is no reason why you should look for a company which pays dividend when you are 30 when you are 30 if it pays dividend buy more of the same share suppose you bought cholamandalam and cholamandalam gives you dividend coal india gives you dividend ntpc gives you dividend use the money to buy the same share that way you are building a portfolio but if you decide to buy a uh, buy an indigo or a zomato or um, uh, Uh, or a nike or ptm whatever these are companies which are going to be growth companies i am not even recommending these companies i am just giving you examples these companies may start paying dividend after 10 years or 12 or 12 years and but that you have that waiting period right i don't have maybe or that waiting period but you have that waiting ability you are only 32 you want this dividend to come in maybe when you are 45 46 80 uh, 45 50 right so that that age is what when you want the power dividend you don't need the dividend now and please all also understand uh, 